Judaism says that uh, the belief that everything within creation is God and God is one with creation or matter. So this desk is God and God is this desk. The tree outside is God and God is that tree. And a lot of pantheists are your Native American Indians uh, where they worshipped uh, the creature more than they worship the creator. They gave everything, uh, you know, the raven in the sky or the, yeah. the, 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 the fox or the wolf. All Everything had a deity attached to it. Okay. So you have those totem poles, and those totem poles are, are gods. And everything, God is in everything, and everything is, in, is God. It's that kind of an idea. And um, that's very dangerous yeah, because yeah. you're not really putting your emphasis in God, but rather in creation. All right, which is kind of what uh, Darwinism is as well. Whereas Genesis 1.1 shows, um, where am I at here? That God created the heaven and the earth, which means he is outside of or separate from his creation. The very fact that it says God created shows you that there's an intelligent designer behind the creation. God is outside of creation doing the creating, okay? Now, this also can bleed into humanism because if everything is God and God is everything, then I see the God in you and I see the God in you and I see the God in you and the goddess in yourself is the... See, we begin to worship self, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the great truth. We all do have God. If we're saved, we all do have God in us, yeah, amen. right? Yeah. But you are not God. Right. Right. Exactly. And God is not attached to your body. He's attached to your soul, which right. is cut away from your body. Right. And we don't worship the, we don't go into our inner self to find God, but we cry out to God, we call out right. to God, we have faith and put our faith in God, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. Yeah. Set your affections on things that be above, not on things that be yeah. on the earth. Amen. See? Yeah. So pantheism is the belief that uh, everything within creation is God, the matter is God, you know, the atom is God, and God is one with creation or matter. But Genesis 1, 1 shows that God created the heaven and the earth, which means he is outside of it or separate from it. God is not the universe, mm -hmm. right? So you have uh, mm -hmm. uh, mother, uh, uh, Father God, uh, Mother God, right? Uh, what do they call that thing here? Mother Nature. Mother Nature. That's the idea, Mother Nature. Yeah. Um, you have all that kind of stuff there. There's something else that was coming to my mind, but left as soon as it came in. <laughs> uh, you know, the universe. They worship the universe. Mm -hmm. Uh, the universe will give to me the yeah. good. Yeah. You put it out into the oh, universe, yeah. and the yeah. universe, it's almost like karma in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Where you put it out into the universe, and the universe becomes your God. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't see a one true God. Mm -hmm. You have to see everything as God, mm -hmm. because you don't want to ex exclude anything from possibly being God. Mm -hmm. That you don't, you don't anger anything that could possibly be God. <laughs> so the chairs we sit in are God, and the dishes that we wash are everything. Cool. is, And that becomes very much... Emotionalism. Yeah, yeah. The tree, tree huggers. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want to cut down trees. They don't want to destroy the planet because it's Mother Earth. Uh. They're worshiping everything as a god. Okay. Mm. Um, since God is a spirit, John four thirty two, and matter is not, we worship God in spirit and in truth, Amen. not in objects or things. Right. Heaven and earth are separated by space. Mm. God and man are separated by sin. So yeah. it was important to see back over here where it says that you worship him in spirit and in truth. You don't worship him in things, yeah. in objects, right? And people say, I don't go to church because I don't, I don't worship a church building. Well, neither do I. Yeah. But I worship the God of the church building yeah. Yeah. that established the local church. Yeah. People say, um, well, I don't believe in saying a prayer for salvation. Well, I don't believe a prayer can save you. I don't believe a prayer can save you either. That's right. Whoever thought a prayer, well, what is a prayer? You can't see a prayer. You can't worship a prayer. So we nobody ever, nobody believes a prayer saves them, but they do believe that the God behind the prayer is what yeah, saves them. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. These guys that say, you know, um, and maybe you said it, I've said it, you know, uh, people believe that, it should, that just a prayer will save them. I don't think anybody just believes a prayer will save no. them. Because nobody worships a prayer. Nope. Right. But they do worship a God mm -hmm. Behind their prayer, whatever God that might be. Buddha, Allah, Mother Teresa, I don't know. 
All right, so heaven and earth are separated by space. God and man are separated by sin, which is why uh, you are not God, because you're sin, and God is not sin. Amen. Right. So you can't be God. Sorry. Amen. All right, number uh, four is uh, humanism. <laughs> Of course, humanism is the worship of man, the worship of self. Now, if you don't know that's where we are, that's oh, exactly yeah. where they we are. Do that. That's exactly where we are. Uh, humanism is the philosophy that focuses on human interests and values. It is a way of life uh, that emphasizes on human dignity and worth and the ability of individuals to achieve self. Here's that word I gave you this morning. Self-realization. Through reason. Mm -hmm. So I can reason myself. Mm -hmm. I can rationalize myself. I can worship myself. I can focus on myself, making myself a better person. Mm -hmm. And that will impress the gods, the God, the universe, one another. If I work on myself, it will somehow allow me to achieve something that I'm looking for, whether it be eternal life or whether it be... Uh, 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 a better afterlife or whatever, a, a better level of hell or a better level of heaven. I was talking about this with uh, Ernie who was dealing with a Jehovah's Witness and uh, that's really Jehovah's Witness right there. They're humanists yeah. because they believe if I can work on myself, yeah. make sure my work self is good, my home self is good, my religious self is good, my neighborly self is good, then I can have a better future. Hmm. Now, they believe there's only 144,000 that get outer space inheritance, heaven, heaven. And they don't care about that because they know they can never achieve that. So all they're looking for is a better life in the afterlife here on earth. And like they get a better go of it hmm. in the next creation, the next life here on earth. And so they're working their whole life in this life to achieve a better afterlife as heaven on earth. Wow. Setting your sights pretty low, if you yeah, ask me. Yeah, right, amen. Uh, let's see. On the contrary, God is the focal point. Amen. Again, in the beginning, God. Not in the beginning, man. That's right. right. Uh, God, uh, God is the focal point. He reveals himself to man, not through reason, but through his every word. Not to mention that while God gave dominion over the animals and over the earth, God still retains possession over all that he created. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 10. At one point, God gave dominion over everything to mankind. Yep. But God never gave up his possession or his control over man who had control over the earth. God still was in control of everything. He just... Gave it over to man to take care of. Ow. That's right. Amen. Let me know how that turned out. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Adam, being it, but when it came to that thing, man. All right, Deuteronomy 10, verse 14. Behold the heaven and the heaven of heavens. Now notice you have three heavens there. Yep. Heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God the earth also, and all that therein is. So God is in control of all three heavens, and the earth, and everything within the earth. Mm -hmm. Now, when he made Adam, and we'll see it, he gave man dominion over all the earth. When he brought Noah off the ark, we'll see it eventually, God gave Noah dominion over all the earth. In every case, man lost his dominion. And as man began to lose dominion, God began to limit the amount of dominion man could have. Mm -hmm. So you get Adam, and Adam got, or not Adam, Abraham. Mm -hmm. And Abraham was given his family. He was given the tribes, if you will. He was given a portion of land, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then now, now it's shrunk all the way down to, guess what? You don't have any control or hardly anything at all. Right. Yeah. Even your dogs, you don't have full control because you've got to register with the state. Right. Or the city or the town you live in. True. True. Your home is not your own. Yeah. You don't own anything, really. Yeah. So you're really limited down to pretty much your own body. And even at that, they like to have control of that. Yeah. As we know, as we've seen. True. So God has really, like, if you just think about where man started with Adam. Yeah. 
or to be over all the earth to how much control you have today. It's crazy. Because God saw how the man given too much responsibility just tends to make a mess of it. <laughs> so now you have many kings, princes, queen, governor, senate, representatives, congressmen, you know, CEOs, trustees, boards, everybody's trying to get their slice of, I want to be in control of this or that. Everybody's trying to get back what they what Adam lost. Some sense of control. Which is why it scares us to be out of control at all. To give our control over to anybody else scares the living tar out of us. And on some level it should because originally God made man to have dominion over the earth. That's why they're always trying to reconnect with nature. Yeah. They're running around, around naked in, the, in these communities because they got to connect back with nature. Just keep your clothes on, would you? <laughs> Let's help us out, please. God have mercy. We can see nakedness now, but we're not of an Eve could, okay? Yeah. <laughs> they fail to recognize that. But you get these guys that are trying to go out into Alaska and try to live with bears. Yeah. Yeah. And that one crazy guy that did that uh, while recording it, and they let him for a long time, that bears let yeah. him yeah. think he was a bear. Yeah. Like he could control them until one night. Yeah. Uh -huh. He could eat. He got he, yeah, and they got the know. thing recorded. You can listen to it yeah. on whatever website oh, yeah. it was. Uh -huh. You can hear the guy yeah. getting eaten by them by the bears. Okay. But he thought he was a bear. He thought he, he thought he connected. Listen, you don't have that dominion. Yeah. Right. You can't just stick your head in an old lion without putting it through an intense training program. And even then, if that old lion decides I'm hungry and you're the head in my mouth right now, yeah. it's gone. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Yeah. See, everybody's trying to get back to the way things were. Give it time. We'll get there. But God is still over it all. Yeah, and he yes. has not given it to you right. to have control over. Yeah, right. If anybody has it on a larger scale than anybody, it's the devil. Yeah. yeah. Because that's why the devil, when he shows up there, he says, you know, all the kings of this world I'll give to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Lord, you know, he, he puts in power who he wants and he raises up somebody and casts down the other. He puts the basest in among us. Mm -hmm. So whoever the next guy that gets in, that's the basest. Yeah. <laughs> Think about yeah. it that way. Yeah. All right. Uh, humanism says, you know, again, you can elevate yourself, uh, whereas God says you can't. Uh, oh, I thought about this, too. I don't know. I, 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 I ran this by a couple of people, but God created man at the end of creation. I started thinking about this. If man is the pinnacle of everything, if man is like humanism, right? If man... God waited till the sixth day to make him. Yeah. It was like God's like, in the back of his mind, God knew, like, I'm going to have to make a man one of these days. <laughs> this guy's going to create a lot of problems for me. <laughs> you know what? I'll make him on the last day and I'll rest. Yeah. <laughs> if you made him on the first day, yeah. Yeah. man's going to be like, now, Lord, yeah. you sure you want to put that yeah. there? Yeah. Now, Lord, you sure about that thing there? Yeah. So he said, you know what? It'll be the last thing I create is man. Yeah. And then I'm going to rest. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we think that, you know, man is the the greatest thing that God ever created. And maybe on some level you can, you can find a lot of truth in that, that God made man to fellowship with. But let's be honest, God, man has made a lot of, created a lot of problems for God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So much that God had to send his only begotten son into this world to die for mankind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to get the idea of what mankind looks like? Go read about the cross of Christ. Right. Because he had to suffer all that for our sin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's God's estimation of what mankind looks like, yeah. what he put his son through. Yeah. But there you have it. God created man at the end of creation. He made man out of the dust of the ground, not out of the stars. Right. Again, heaven and earth, space and matter. Yeah. If God wanted to make man out of something that is of a higher form of a more intellectual form, a more heavenly or spiritual form, would he not then have gone out to space where the stars are and pulled things out of the out of the gases, out of the things out there in outer space? The light, you know what he did? He went down to the dust of the earth and he got a big old bunch of ball of dust and he formed that thing together and he says, that's going to be with my estimation of man. Now, so you have some of these religions out there, some of these ideas out there, that when they die, they go back to stardust. Like their, their body just like floats off into the ether, and they all go back to dust 
the stardust because they believe they came out of the stars. That's because they think more of themselves than what God thinks yeah, of them. God says, you're made out of dust, yes, yeah. but not stardust, earth dust. Yeah, amen. But man wants to Pixie get, dust. huh? Pixie, Pixie dust, yeah, that's about me. That's that other crowd, you know. <laughs> Pixieism. Yeah. God, God created man out of the, out of, at the end of creation. He made man out of the dust of the ground, not out of the stars. And he limited man's dominion and habitation to where? To the earth. Again, God's saying, I'll make you, but you can't come up here. Yeah. You can't get up here unless I bring you up here. Yeah. Enoch, Elijah, yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ brought them out of the heart of heaven. You know that mankind died in the Old Testament. You know where he went? He went down right. into the heart of the earth. Right. Right. Just think about that. Man couldn't even get out of the earth ball that he was taken out of until his only begotten son came and took him out. And you think you are going to improve your self-worth? To please and match God's nature? No chance. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 4. Originally God made man to have dominion over all the earth. After the fall, these things have been somewhat reduced and limited. But one of the things that stands true is that man is not allowed into outer space. Deuteronomy 4, 19. I mean... The whole uh, Deuteronomy 4, verses 14 through uh, 24 is all good about the warnings to abstain from idolatry. And Romans chapter 1 is the matchment for this. But look at verse 19. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. So God made all those things up there that man should be under it and not be a part of it. God says your, your habitation is limited to here on earth because I don't want you going out. I don't want you getting your, your mind set on the stars and the sun and the moon and worship it. Mm. And don't you know that if God says, do not look up and worship the sun and the moon and the stars, don't you know what man's going to do? Of he's going to look north and he's going to see the sun and the moon and the stars and all the hosts thereof and he is going to worship yeah. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Bar, he'll worship Earth too. Yeah. Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. Now, he's going to worship it all. So it might still that the horoscopes will now be his God. Mm -hmm. I will see what the horoscopes tell me to do and who it tells me to marry and not. I will align my life with the stars. Yeah. Why do you think God put it in there? Because he knew what was in man. He knew that man was going to want to go out to the stars. Don't they in Genesis chapter 11 build a tower? Yeah. Yeah, whose Babylon. tops may reach up to heaven, Babylon. Yeah. They certainly do. Doesn't man have a desire through NASA yeah. to build ships, rockets, stations that will take them, maybe have, or will take them in outer space? Don't they want to find life on other planets and learn how we might be able to expand the humanity into outer space and take trips up there and Will replenish the outer space. Isn't that man's desire? Yeah. It is. It really is. And it's 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 not wrong to want to get out where God is. Mm -hmm. Your desire is to find God. Yeah. Amen. And something within your conscience, within your spirit, the makeup that God made you with says to you, God is not down. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. God is up. Amen. So a man is, should come into this world with enough light in him, John chapter 1, to go out to where light is. Right. Light is where? Up there. Yeah. God made the sun and the moon and the stars to be light upon the earth. And so man who was made of the earth, born with enough light in him, 
to find his way back to God should be able to lift up his eyes and look toward the heavens where the light is and say, that's where my creator is. That's where God must be. How do I get there? Let me look until I find my way. And of course, I think that is the national intention of everybody, which is why they try to find life in other planets and try to find the meaning of life and come up with all sorts of crazy philosophies that actually end up excluding God rather than including God. Man's desire is to ascend or go beyond that, which is, his, which is the scope of man's uh, domain and dominion. Look at Genesis chapter number 1. Man's desire is to go out of bounds. God's boundary is the earth and where the fowls of heaven fly, where the eagles fly, where the crows fly, where the sparrows fly. That's man's dominion. It's earth and it's this the atmosphere that we are within, the clouds, of second heaven universe, that is not for mankind. That is for God, and whatever else lives out there will right. get there, but whatever else might possibly be out there in outer space, that is not for you and I. I, know. I, see, I said, are you against uh, space travel? I'm against it if God's against yeah, it. Yeah. Am I going to stop space travel? No. <laughs> but am I going to reap the, the consequences of it? Yeah, yeah. probably. If there's any global warming or climate change, maybe it's because we're poking holes in things. Yeah. We gotta not poke holes in. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not saying that's for sure. I'm just it's a possibility. Look at um, Genesis chapter one, verse sixteen. And God made two great lights: the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. God made no man on this day. God really made the sun and the moon and the stars to be the controlling forces of outer space. God did not create man to control outer space. God created the sun and the moon and the stars. Why did he put the sun and the moon out there? Verse 14. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. You know what controls the seasons? Yep. Yep. You know what man is trying to do? Change it, mess with it. You have harp, uh, that place over there, I don't know where it's at now, where it's weather control. Wow. Try to control the weather, try to make it snow, try to make it rain, try to make fire come down. They, man is trying to control, even the very nature of climate change in and of itself, trying to limit the carbon footprint, all of that there is to have us make an impact in outer space. That's the whole mindset. God says, listen, I know how to take care of these yeah, things. Amen. Keep your dirty, rotten little fingers <laughs> off my sun, my moon, and my stars. Oh, they will work just the way they're supposed to work. Amen. <laughs> Leave it alone. But of course, we can't do that. No. So man has no... When God gave man dominion, he did not give dominion uh, man dominion over outer space. No, no, no. He gave the sun and the moon and the stars to have dominion out there to be the controlling factors with God obviously being the greater. Amen. All right, uh, verse number 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, the fowl that they may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. This is the first heaven. Yeah. So God says, we're going to create some things, the fowl of the earth, they're going to fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. That's our first heaven. That's the clouds. That's our atmosphere. And then God created the whales, every living creature that moveth, that water which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. Every winged fowl after his kind, God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters and the seas, let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth a living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. It was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind. Everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, 
over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That's where man's dominion was limited to. Adam was never given charge to take care of the sun and the moon and the stars. Man was given charge to take care of everything within the first heaven. Fish, cattle, creeping things, birds that fly within this heaven. Look at Psalm 115. Of course, Adam did that. He named the animals. Mm -hmm. I don't think he named the stars. You know what man does? Man names the stars. <laughs> the stars. Mm -hmm. You know you can buy a star? Yes. yes I saw you know that? You can buy a star. You can actually name your own star. Yes. I don't know how you do it. So Some guy sells you something in the mail, you yeah, know, sells you something online, you buy your own star. Some of my guys getting rich over people thinking they own a star in outer space. You don't own anything out of that. Yeah. Uh, go buy a puppy, go buy a kitty, go buy a tarantula, go buy something that you can actually have some control over. Land in Florida. Huh? Land in Florida. Florida. Yeah, exactly. Like and good luck even controlling that creature. Yeah. We, we can't take care of what's ours in our own hands, yeah. and we think we can go into outer space and start tinkering around out of it. You don't have any idea. <laughs> but these guys, they think they do. They don't. Adam did wasn't called the name of the stars. He's called the name of the animals. Psalm 115, look at verse 16. Psalm 115, 16. Psalm 115, 16. He says, the heaven, even the heavens, see, so there's three, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. Isn't this interesting how the Lord's kind of like narrowing the ball field, <laughs> narrowing our field of play? I'm not even sure anymore how much of our atmosphere we have control of anymore. Those birds that fly up there, who, who's going to go up there and try to, you know, wrangle an eagle out of the sky? You ain't going to be able to go up there. And, you can't just go up, jump in the air, and grab a bird out of the sky. You have very little control of the things that fly above your head. Who of you, like Superman, is going to fly into our atmosphere or whatever and stop a plane from flying? You ain't going to do that. I don't know how much, but you know what we do? We build airplanes. And we put them off into the sky. We call them birds. Put them into the sky there, however many thousands of feet up in the sky. They do this kind of stuff. And they wonder when they crash. We wonder when there's a malfunction. It's like, I don't know, man. Like, what do you think is going to happen when you get out of this area down here? Yeah, okay. We got a hard time track controlling our own vehicles, and we're going to fly things through. <laughs> the air? Now, I'm thankful for air travel. It'll get you here and there. I get all that kind of stuff. But I wonder here where the Lord is saying, the heaven and the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth have they given to the children of men. I wonder how much God really approves of that kind of stuff. Say, so is it a sin to take an aircraft? No, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that the more you try to get out of bounds, the more problems you create. Yes. Amen. What they're even doing with all these vehicles that can drive themselves, yes. you're supposed to have control over it. Yes, yes. You are supposed to have your hands on it because that's. it looks like God limited our dominion right now over the things within our grasp. Why in the world would you get into a vehicle uh, let the vehicle drive itself? <laughs> no way. Does this make much sense? GPS is another thing altogether. The geographical positioning. You're putting your faith, your trust into a thing. Whereas man at one time used to actually hold the map in his hand. Yeah. Weird stuff, man. I'm thinking for GPS. Don't get me wrong. Like, <laughs> I went to go to the Concord Capitol, but it uh, takes you to Concord, North Carolina. No way. Is that yeah. right? Is that right? I know. I'm just saying. Yeah. I know Rebecca, every time she tries to come home from my parents' house or somewhere. Yeah. yeah it's always Bedford weird. area. Yeah. They always send her into like, the first time she ever did it, they sent her off into no man's land. Our address is the middle of nowhere in Gosstown. Yeah. So, she can't rely on that anymore. I don't know. Look at Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. This is humanism. Humanism thinks man 
can do whatever he wants. Man, if he just keeps working and improving upon himself, can achieve anything he wants. Now, I will give you this. You ready? He says over in Genesis, he says, I better go put a stop to things because there's no end to what they can accomplish with their imagination. Weren't we talking about that recently, brother? Like, if, if God did not limit our imagination and our capabilities, what could man do? And I think there's a verse in Genesis, if I remember correctly, in Genesis 11, I think he says there, uh, he says, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. That's yeah. important. Yeah. And they have all one language. Yep. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Yep. In other words, when you get a bunch of people like-minded, this will preach for a church. <laughs> when you get people like-minded, yep. all working for the same goal, the same direction, the same purpose, unless God stops you, there's not a whole lot that can stop you. Just shows you that, listen, if you have an idea for where this church could go, if we could all get on the same page, yeah, and if God's behind it, yeah. boy, could we go somewhere. Yeah, and the only one that'll stop us is us or God. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Call it Isaiah 14. I think that's why God has allowed man to fly in airplanes. The Kitty Hawk brothers there. Mm -hmm. I think they had an imagination, and God didn't stop it. Mm -hmm. Now, don't you know that if God said, you ain't going anywhere, yeah. yeah. He could have yeah, done yeah, it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, Somehow yeah. God allowed those individuals to have yeah. a mind created that way, an IQ like that, trial and error, figure that stuff out. Could man travel in outer space? Has man traveled in outer space? Different subject for a different time. All I'm saying is, unless God stops from happening, yep. and there's enough people that want to go out there, nothing could stop them from doing it. Yeah. Wait for so many times, man. Oh, brother. I mean, wasn't that the movie, uh, Back to the Future? Yeah. Did they have flying cars in that one, or is that yeah. a different movie? That was a time machine. That was a time machine. Time machine, that's what it was. Yeah. That's what it's talking about it's flying, flying, flying cars right now. Flying yeah. cars, yeah. You don't even need to have a pilot license or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They've already got electric uh, uh, man, man drones right now. Right, that's a good point. With flight capacitors. I mean, I'm telling you, the Lord don't stop it. Now, listen, in the tribulation... There's a thing there where they the kings get their minds together for one hour and they wreak some havoc on the earth. That's just one hour, ten kings all getting the same mind together. Mm. Isaiah 14, look at verse 14. Now here's the here's the humanistic mindset, and you find out who it's associated with. Yep. Isaiah 14, 14. Ready? Mm -hmm. Transcendentalism. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Mm -hmm. I will be like the most high. Mm -hmm. Humanism says I can achieve. I can do. I, I can rationalize, self-realize. I can imagine. I can put it out there. It's your vision boards. It's your dream boards. If I think it enough, I can manifest it. Yeah. Yeah. That is a satanic mindset. That's right. Now, that's exactly why the devil is cast down. Now, if we say, if God will, or if God allow, if God permit, if God be for us, who can be against us? That's different than saying, I will. Yeah, yeah right. right. Exactly. To the exclusion of God, I will. Yeah. Right. I will manifest my 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 future. I will I will get my job based on my merits. It's that self-made mentality. Right. I'm a self-made man. Then you're a man destined for destruction. Amen. Because if God didn't make you, and if God ain't behind you, Amen. take heed lest you fall. Yeah. But those are the, these are the five I wills of Lucifer, who is now the devil. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Which means that the devil, Lucifer, had a throne. I will also I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. And then he says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now, I don't know, but do most flat do most pl uh, planes fly above the heights of the clouds? Yes. Yeah. You can fly 80,000 feet into the stratosphere. Thank you for the Air Force. Thank you for the military personnel. Thank you for all that. Because if we didn't have it, you know that other nations wouldn't. We'd right. be sunk. Right. And maybe that's why God allowed it for right. national air defense. I get all that. But look at the I will ascend above the clouds. Yeah. We're there. Mm -hmm. We're there. 
outer space is next. Maybe they've accomplished that. You know where they'd like to get to? If God didn't put that sea of glass there, you know where they'd like to get to? They'd like to get to the other side of that sea of glass there, which is the third heaven. Yeah. Yeah. That's their goal is to get back to where, I, I, in some way, get back to where that what they lost. If there was a time where man had a relationship with God that went from earth to the third heaven via a ladder, yeah. Jacob's ladder kind of a thing, yeah. if God allowed Adam to have some sort of communication with him that was unlimited fellowship, between heaven and earth, man lost that. Man has been trying to achieve and get that back from Genesis chapter number 11 where they're building a tower whose top may reach to heaven. They're trying to poke through the sea of glass there to get to the other side. Yep. You have a question? Now, if you state that, you go back to Satan when he was, Lucifer was cast out. Yes. He lost his first estate. Yes. Now he's the god of this world. Correct. Who's promoting the ideas into the air. There you go. To be able to get back up there. Excellent. And he says, I will assign. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's a satanic mind. Humanism is so satanic. It's, oh, it's, and it's probably one of the greatest. And it's taught. It's taught. It's taught. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's wicked. It's right out of the, uh, the devil's playbook. Man has lost his dominion on a macro scale as far as the kingdoms are concerned. And his dominion is now limited to those things which affect his daily life. On a macro scale, man has limited dominion. Mm -hmm. On a very micro scale, you still have dominion right. over your home, your your current job. If you have a business, then you have dominion over your business, right? Who you hire, who you fire. And as God allows, he extends and he widens that dominion. But also, God can shrink that dominion down as well. Yeah. Okay? Uh, look at Genesis chapter number 9. You can see why it would be a while to get through these. <laughs> Genesis, huh? A 10 years. No, it won't be 10 years. <laughs> there are There are 50 chapters of Genesis. 50 years. 50 years. <laughs> a chapter a year, 50 years. I'll still be here. Listen, I, 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 who's teaching Genesis after I'm gone, but I'm going to be teaching it in my 90s, I can tell you. <laughs> I'll forget where I want to start all over again. Genesis 1. What the beginning? All right, Genesis chapter 9, look at verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Now Noah inherits a cursed earth. Mm -hmm. Adam inherited an uncursed earth. Right, right. So his dominion has always has already changed. Now what Adam had, he had when everything was in perfect, mm. sinless harmony. Right. Now he gets something that is disrupted by a great cosmic event, but also the fact he's got to start from scratch with sin in the world. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it. At the hand of every man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. And you, be fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. When God told Adam to multiply or punish the earth, there was no capital punishment given because there was no murder yet given. The first command about how to deal with capital punishment isn't until here. Okay. Uh, look at Matthew chapter 4. So Noah had quite the dominion for quite a while. Of course, Noah, his three sons, died. But out of them came 
the three, I guess you'd say races, for better word. Matthew chapter 4. But you know that, you know, Ham had his race of people, and they all took care of themselves. And Japheth had his race of people, they all took care of themselves. And Shem and, and so forth. <clears throat> and things just kind of went off in different directions. Somebody has dominion over his own individual territory. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and set him upon the pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, all the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So there we see that the devil, the God of this world, goes 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the devil, the god of this world, has control of all the kingdoms of this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Second Corinthians 4, 4. He says there, in whom the god of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So the God of this world right now is Satan. Now think about what he wanted. I will ascend. I will be like the Most High. I will exalt my throne. Well, guess what? God kicked him, kicked him out of heaven for all that. Where did he send him? He sent him down here. His dominion now is... His, uh, his providential kingdom, if you will, small p, is over this world. Yeah. Like you said, so he governs this world the way that benefits him the most. Well, what benefits him the most but to drive people down into hell? Yeah. Where eventually is where he's going to spend all eternity, where he will be a king within his kingdom, yeah. confined to the lake of fire, and his subjects, his loyal subjects, will be all the unclean spirits and all the lost souls that are down there with them. So he gets them to think the way that he thinks yeah. so he can drag them down to hell. Uh, yeah, it's a very it's a very scary thing when you yeah. realize who's behind it all. Yeah. Very scary yeah. thing. Now, if you believe that there was a time before a recreation, in other words, if you believe that Genesis 1-1 was the beginning of the heaven and the earth, something happened, and then Genesis 1, 2 through Genesis chapter 2 is a recreation. Then the place where that, that would take place between Genesis 1 and Genesis 1, 2, the place that would have happened, that was Isaiah 14. Right. Where if God in the beginning created the heaven and the earth, and if there was something that happened that caused chaos in the earth, so that Genesis 1, 2, the earth was without form and void, then what would have happened was... Satan would have lost whatever power he had in a battle with God and it would have caused catastrophe or chaos on the earth so that God drowns out the earth. If that happened, that's what the time that it would have happened. Because it says that the devil, Lucifer, he says, I will exalt my throne. Which means Lucifer had a throne. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yeah. If he had a throne, his throne was on earth, his dominion was on the earth to rule over the things of the earth. And where did Satan or where did Lucifer want to get to? Above the clouds. Why above the clouds? Because his earth was underneath the clouds. Yeah. Above the heaven, why? Because that's where God sits. And he lost that kingdom when he got that pride, and it was then transferred over to who? Adam. Who then transferred over to who? Noah. Noah. Who then transferred over to who? Abraham. And who then transferred over to who? The 12 tribes. Now they're scattered apart. Now who has the world? The devil has the world. And what's he trying to do? He's trying to reclaim something that was lost. A throne. A kingdom. Which is why 
in the tribulation, he sits in the temple yeah. as God, declaring himself to be God. Yeah. He finally gets to make a proclamation on the earth wherein I don't think he, I think he knows what's going to happen, but he declares something that is not true. One last one, look at Ephesians chapter number 6. And we'll get to the possibility of a gap another time, but if he had a throne, if he had it on earth, you have to find where he would have had that. And between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2, looks like the time he would have had that. Alright, Ephesians chapter 6. Now look at verse 10. Actually, look at verse 9. Sorry, verse 9. He says, And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master, what? Also in heaven. So man has a master. Okay, now Christians, our master is God, right? We serve God. He is our master. We understand that. As it pertains to all of creation, he is the creator. He is the master of the universe in that way. Knowing that your master also in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. So if God don't respect persons, what are we doing worshiping mankind? Now you can show respect to your elders. And to show respect to your parents. I'm not saying, he's saying nobody gets into heaven based on how they treat people. You don't get into heaven because you think your way into heaven or because you're a good person. You are all held to the same standard. I'm the master. Yeah. You're the servant. Amen. Get in line. Yeah. Amen. Now verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we rest not against flesh and blood. We are not each other's enemy, folks. As I, said, as I said to you on Wednesday night, they don't go to hell because they're a humanist, because they're an atheist, because they're an evolutionist. They go to hell because they reject the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why somebody goes to hell. Right, amen. You're not my enemy. For we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. That's the God of this world. Amen. And God allows the devil, the God of this world, to put into power who he wants because ultimately, who the devil wants in power is who God wants in power. Because ultimately, it leads out to a pre-tribulational rapture, which is what we all want. Yeah, yeah. And then it leads to a second advent, which we all want. Yeah. Which leads to a 1,000-year millennial reign of Christ, which we all want. And then a new heaven and a new earth, which we all want. So God says, devil, whatever you want, you got to run it by me. And if it fits within my plan, mm -hmm. you can have it. Yeah. And if it don't, and get out.